Okay, I'm out here in Palm Springs, California for the November 2020 McCormick's Classic Car Auction. Uh, you probably saw my video from earlier this year. I did the uh, February auction from before all the uh, COVID madness uh, started and everyone had to wear masks and things like that. So this is really like the first big classic car auction uh, since all this has started here th that's actually here in Southern California. And there's been auctions all over the country, uh, Mecham and a lot of your big auctions. But here in California, obviously things have been kind of strict. So, it's, so this is like, it's kind of a good chance for me to go out and shoot a uh, vintage car event uh, here in SoCal. Um, I'm not gonna post the prices of the cars on the video like I did on the Lucerne Valley auction because someone asked that on my last uh, Palm Springs auction. I'll probably have this video up before they've got all the final bid prices up on their website, but I'll put a link in the description to the McCormick's website where you can actually look up the uh, prices that the uh, cars actually went for. And uh, it doesn't look like there's a lot of cars. It looks like there's less cars here this time than there were last time, but there's still a lot of good stuff to see and we're gonna go check it out right now all right one of the things I really like about the McCormick's auction it's not just high dollar stuff unfortunately I mean, they do get a lot of these uh, late model you know used cars if you will but they get a lot of like really nice entry-level classics such as the 67 Bonneville uh, and this one's really cool actually I had a 67 uh, Electra 225 that's what this kind of reminds me of that I actually sold here at the auction a few years back I've actually, I think, sold about five or six cars at this auction. I've never bought anything here, though. But this one looks to be really, really, in really good shape. This one uh, looks like it came out of Texas. It's got an inspection sticker on it. So I know they do a pretty stringent inspection there, so it's probably been, been looked over pretty well. Interior looks original. It's a little bit ripped, and it's of course, it's white, so I'm sure they've cleaned it as best they could. It does show a little bit of yellowing, but that's to be expected. Uh, the steering wheel... The uh, plaque stick part is actually cracking. So this looks to be like a really original car. Shows 19,000 on the odometer. I'm guessing it's just a really well kept uh, 119. But uh, this being a four door, I don't see it bringing like a ton of money. So it's, it's literally the kind of car, like if you're looking to just get into classics, you don't want something high dollar, you want something you, that's reliable enough you could drive every day. This is really the exactly the kind of car you should be looking for. And uh, man, this thing's actually pretty sweet. I mean, pretty much anybody would have a car like this, you'd get a lot of compliments on it because it's in very, very, very good condition. Right, here's one that just rolled in, uh, as you saw previously. This is a, a 64 Fairlane station wagon. Now, wagons are pretty hot and they're real popular, especially for people that want to take their kids out, take the whole family out for some cool cruising. And of course you could put stuff in the back. This one's even got the way back seat. So, so you can get like uh, two or three little kids in there if you had to. And uh, this one's in pretty well good nick. The interior has been redone. It's not correct, but uh, still this is like the kind of car you can enjoy. 289, looks like according to the fenders, the guy doesn't have the hood up. Um, automatic transmission, you know, pretty standard stuff for a Fairlane. It's got the uh, torque thrust wheels. I'm gonna have to go this way since I, I got a social distance around these cars. But really, really, just a nice cream puff of a car. Something that, you know, the whole family could enjoy. All right, here is a good example of two mid-60s American classics. So we're gonna start here with the uh, 65 Rambler 550 uh, classic wagon. Uh, this one probably has, I'm guessing has the straight six in it. I don't see any V8 badging on it, uh, which they're very reliable. I used to have a 63 Rambler station wagon. I had a 770. Um, this one is really, really nice. It has Montana plates on it. So I'm not sure if it came from there, if the guy just, did the uh, Montana registration thing where they don't have to pay California registration. This guy says the lodge on the door. That's like a recent, uh, like, like a sticker. It doesn't look like an old logo that's faded or anything like that. Um, it's kind of probably almost the look they were going for. Uh, this one's got radio delete. Can't tell if it's got air. A lot of the Ramblers had, had air conditioning. This one does not appear to have air conditioning in it. So it's kind of a base car. It looks like a nice original car. Uh, might have had a respray at one time. Yeah, I think it's been resprayed at one time. If that's original paint. That would be absolutely amazing, though. Um, kind of neat, though, because these again are the kind of cars that you could really take out and enjoy, not worry about too much. They're very reliable. You can still get parts for them, and uh, 
they're just a lot of fun to own. And of course, I'm involved with the uh, local Southern California Rambler AMC Club with my uh, AMC Pacer, and uh, just a, just a neat, neat car. And here's a muscle car. This is a 66 Chevelle convertible Super Sport. Not sure if it's a real uh, Super Sport. This one's actually got Super Sport 427 badging, which of course is not correct. They only came with a uh, 396 on the Chevelles in 66. You had to get an Impala or a Corvette if you wanted the uh, 427. Uh, this one's got cracking on the hood. Looks to be like an older, probably like an 80s or 90s restoration that's... Uh, that's sort of showing its age, but uh, still a neat car. I'm sure once it goes across the block, they'll mention if it's a real super sport or not. This one's got a four speed with console and bucket seats. And that looks like, it actually looks like original seats though. It looks like it uh, wasn't recovered like, again, unless it was done a very, very long time ago, like in the eighties or nineties, because they have been making kits for those at least since then. And it's a, a black plate car, it might be a, uh, uh, YOM plate because it's got a 66 decal on the back which usually denotes that it's a YOM so it might not be an original actual California car black plate car but just one that they uh, spent the money and put the uh, year manufacturer plates on and it does show some bubbling like I said there's a lot of imp enough the bubble and the paint's going to come up there a lot of little, little imperfections but if you want a super sport if you want a car that appears to be an ama a really cool muscle car maybe it's not 100% correct but something you can enjoy, this is definitely a good option. All right, here's a, a 1963 Pontiac Bonneville convertible. Uh, this one, black plate car. Um, this looks like it actually is a black plate car because it's got a, a 96 sticker on the plate, uh, which means it might have been off the road since 96. So hopefully it's actually been gone through and they checked the brakes and everything else uh, before they decided to sell it. This one's kind of neat. It's got the uh, manifold vacuum gauge. That's not a tachometer. That is a vacuum gauge. Console with automatic bucket seats and uh, nice engine turned uh, uh, dashboard there. All original, original radio. Shows 36,000 miles. It actually very well might be 36,000 original miles, especially since it's been parked for so long. Um, very clean, like I said, looks like an older paint job that's not original paint, but uh, still, I mean, it still holds up, still something great, especially for the Palm Springs area. See, it was last tagged in 1996, so it has been off the road, probably was in a garage all those years is what I'm guessing, but uh, still, a neat car to see, not something you see every day, uh, an old uh, 63 Bonneville, but uh, really cool, like mid-century uh, American convertible. Here's a good example of a, sort of like an early Malaise classic. This is a 1973 Buick Century Regal. So this is when you were starting getting into the uh, smog era of cars. This one's a, a blue plate California car. Uh, it's got uh, some older aftermarket wheels, probably from the, the early 80s, I would guess. Uh, but it looks like somebody took really good care of it. And uh, I mean, I don't see this being a high dollar item, but this is definitely something that most enthusiasts can appreciate or enjoy. You know, maybe even not for a lot of money. Terror looks like it was redone many years ago. It's starting to crack, but they did a really nice job of making it kind of like like puffed up. So it's it's probably extremely comfortable to ride, and especially on long trips. And uh, yeah, it doesn't look that bad. It's a really nice car. Like I said, probably an older paint job. It's uh, holding up extremely well. It's got a hitch on the back, and it's got uh, 2020 tags on it. So something somebody was actually using again not a high dollar item but it's a really neat classic that someone will enjoy and they will hopefully purchase here today at uh, the McCormick's auction All right, here's another example of uh, 60s muscle American muscle this is a, a 1967 Oldsmobile 442 I'm not sure if it's a real 442 or if it's just a, a cut list that's been changed over. I'm guessing since it actually says 442 on the uh, on the auction sheet that it's a real 442. So definitely a desirable muscle car. I mean, obviously not as desirable as like the Chevelles, as the GTOs and things like that. 
but still still neat to see this one's got buckets console with the automatic transmission I'm trying to see if it has a tachometer I do not see a tachometer in there um, but uh, vinyl top car it's in good condition something someone could definitely enjoy and let's come around the other side I'll show you the other side of the car It's got uh, old style rally wheels on it. Just a nice car in uh, good condition. Something someone could definitely enjoy. All right, here's a uh, 63 Chevy C10 step side short bed. Um, this one's really neat. It's uh, a little bit customized. You can see it's been lowered. Uh, it's got a, a small block that, that has a lot of uh, custom touches to it, including some headers. Uh, it's been converted to an alternator. I think these were still generator in 63. I'm sure someone will correct me if I'm wrong. It's got uh, air conditioning, and uh, like this is definitely not a stock motor and an aluminum radiator in it. Uh, it's like it was an older job done to it, but you know what? This is still something someone can enjoy. It's got like a later, uh, probably probably like a Suburban or something seats in it with a center console for those long road trips. Because if you've ever ridden in these original bench seats in these trucks, they're, they're not exactly the uh, most comfortable, if you know what I mean. Uh, it's got like a later tilt column with a custom uh, steering wheel. I can't go in there, unfortunately. And uh, of course, it's a short bed, which, which is extremely desirable. And uh, it's got the, uh, the wood kit in the bed, which uh, I had a 58 and I bought the wood kit and never got around to putting it in. I actually wound up selling it with the uh, wood kit, the 58 I had. Uh, but man, this is really something you could enjoy. And these are just increasing in value every year as they, they get harder and harder to find in good condition. All right, since there's actually three classics in a line here, I'm going to go ahead and barrel through them. We're going to start with this uh, Malaise era classic lifted uh, truck. This is an 86 Dodge Ram Charger, and it must have passed smog because actually they, it, any of the ones that did not pass smog of the smog era cars, they put stickers on the windshield saying they, they cannot sell it to you unless you're an out-of-state buyer or a dealer. So this one does not have that, so this one must have passed smog. Uh, if you look at it, I mean, it's got the uh, custom front bumper with the uh, with the fog lights, the LED fog lights uh, built into it. And, uh, I mean, this was definitely someone's project that they really went full bore with it. It's, you know, it's not perfect. It's got a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of a, a couple blemishes and bends and bumps and bruises and things like that. I mean, it is an off-road vehicle, which I'm assuming was used for some off-road dirty. Well, obviously, a lot of them weren't, but... Uh, Full tinted window, so I can't really see what's going on inside. Of course, big wheels and tires. Oh, it's for sale, no kidding, it's at an auction. I so said, once again, it's just uh, kind of a neat 4x4. It's missing the Dodge badge, but those, those should be, you should be able to get those pretty easily. And uh, going back to the 1940s, this is a, a 41 Packard. This says to be a 120 Touring Sedan. I don't know all the designation of the uh, Packards. This one looks like either an older paint job or an original paint job. So little bumps and bruises. I, I think it I think it might even be original paint, uh, or maybe it was just repainted many many years ago. But still, it's kind of a neat car. This one's actually Homer Simpson's car because it says "Don't" on the license plate. Um, man. So it's got older white wall tires. Those are actually radials, so if they're older radials, you'd probably want to replace those pretty soon. Those aren't bias plies. Bias plies tend to hold up better with age. Uh, anybody that's ever dealt with uh, old white wall tires will know what I'm talking about. Antenna is kind of bent, again, not, not, a, not a complete deal breaker, something that can be rectified. Very original looking upholstery. It's ripped, but uh, I mean, as original as this car looks, I would just leave it like that, which is probably what the previous owner was doing with it. And it's got the floorboards showing some signs of wear, but once again, an original car, you can get away with that. It does have some rippling there. It looks like the fender was hit and then they bent it back, but uh, it's really not super noticeable. But still, I mean, what a neat car. It was last registered in 1986. So that probably explains why it has those old 
old yellowing tires on it. Hopefully they've uh, gone through it mechanically and uh, got everything sorted out. Obviously anybody that purchases a car like this knows they're going to run into something, you know, different little things here and there, especially being a car from 1941. But uh, man, if you were looking for just a nice, cool, original 1940s car, this is definitely a good choice. Okay, getting into the third classic in this line. It's a little 67 Volkswagen Beetle. You know, I love my Beetles. I don't think I've done any videos on any of the Volkswagen products I've owned. I think, I think the last one of these I owned was before I started doing YouTube videos. This one's in pretty good nick. Looks like it was recently first registered in California with an 8S uh, designation on the plate. That's a pretty recent license plate. Um, old school almost like a cow style bug you know like they would have done back in the 80s it's got uh, still got the four lug hubs on it with the uh, with the wheels like that the custom wheels and of course it's got the uh, custom upholstery but still it's a Volkswagen Beetle that someone could enjoy obviously these are very easy to repair very easy to keep on the road and uh, this one actually could be yours I know what you're thinking. Okay, it's it's just a C4 Corvette. Those things are everywhere. But this one's actually a really special C4 Corvette because this one's actually a 1990 Corvette ZR1. Uh, this was like the hot item. They had the uh, like it's just like a, this was like a super high performance package uh, back then, and they didn't make a whole lot of these. And the dealers that had them marked them up considerably. And a lot of people actually held on to these as collector items. They would actually buy them, leave them in a garage with zero miles on them, which unfortunately has actually deflated the value since so many people did that. And there's a lot of differences to these. These actually had a six-speed transmission. Uh, I believe like the motor was built by Mercury Marine, and it's it was like a completely different motor from the rest of the uh, C4 Corvettes. And if you look at the rear tires, they're actually super, super wide tires um, and then the back end is actually widened a little bit so from from what a regular uh, Corvette uh, C4 was and of course it has the ZR1 badging on the uh, back bumper uh, these don't don't bring like a ton of money like you know compared to like say a 60s or early 70s big block Corvette but still they're very collectible and are actually starting to appreciate in value so something that somebody's probably gonna take home and enjoy I'm sure for years to come All right, moving on to this one. This is actually a real funky one. Now this was the 70s, so really oddball 70s. Uh, 79 Cadillac Seville Opera Coupe. And these were done custom. These actually weren't done at the factory, obviously, but uh, if you look, the nose has actually been extended out and they've actually cut the cab. So it's like they've moved, um, it looks like almost like they've moved the cab back, but they've actually added the front and then kind of cut the, uh, the back. So it's only a two seater. And if you look where the hood ends and it's got the uh, faux spare tires uh, mounted on the side I really don't know why they did this other than it was the 70s and just weird stuff was happening like that but it's very interesting I mean I remember seeing these on the street back when I was a kid sometimes but I mean I'm sure it cost a lot of money over what a regular Seville cost and I'm sure just it was for people that wanted something different. I mean, it was really a different time. I mean, obviously now there's no way any company would take a Cadillac and do anything weird like this with it. Still an interesting classic, something if you showed up at a local cruise night or car show, you'd definitely have the only one. There's a neat little 1979 MGB Roadster. Now these, you know, since I've been doing a lot of the uh, the uh, smog, the stuff with Californians for classic car smog exemptions, we find a lot of people have these have problems getting these things smogged here in California. A lot of the smog parts are not available for these. So if you do live in a place where they still smog these late 70s cars, do not buy one of these MGs unless it's a pre-smog vehicle. You can see the sticker there that the auction applies telling warning buyers if you're in the, live in the state of California or if you're not a dealer do not buy this car uh, this one's in pretty good condition but like I said uh, these do have problems smogging and I've heard that from several owners of these especially since I've been running the group and uh, doing the videos here on YouTube for classic car smog exemptions still 
They're neat little fun cars. Ironically, they're perfect for the California sunshine. Unfortunately, the state of California does not agree with that. But here's one you actually can enjoy. This is actually a 1965 Ford Thunderbird Coupe. This is the uh, base model, so it doesn't have the Landau bars on it. This one's a, a black plate California car. It appears to be in really nice condition. It's probably like a nice original car where it's, it's been repainted over the years. There's still a lot of these out there. A lot of these in good original condition. So I think of 60s cars, this is like one of the best bargains in 60s vehicles because you can still pick these up for a very reasonable price on something that's a little bit flashy from the 1960s that you can enjoy for years to come. And parts are available since it's a, a Ford FE engine. And uh, just, I mean, it's one of those things, I've never been a huge fan of this body style. In fact, I was given a 64 a few years ago and I wound up selling it because I just wasn't that into it. But there's still a lot of fans of these. All right, so it's like a K car. It's an 84 Chrysler LeBaron convertible with the turbo four cylinder. These are actually starting to get kind of popular, especially among the uh, Malays community. Not a huge value car yet, so you always see people asking like crazy money for these things, but honestly, these are only worth like a few thousand dollars, like even in this condition. Does not have the leather interior, which, you know, a lot of them had that Mark Cross leather interior. These had the electronic uh, voice, like when you open the door, told you your door was ajar and stuff like that. Not sure if this one has, I think that was actually an option. But, uh, man, this one's actually in much better condition than I usually see these. And it still has all the wood paneling on the side. Definitely from a different time, something you could take to a Malaise Days or a Radwood show. And you'd probably have a lot of people checking this thing out because even in the 80s, that was pretty unusual. All right, so what do both these cars have in common? Well, they're both mid-60s, and they're both boats, but they're both boats for a different reason. Uh, this one's, of course, a 1963 Cadillac Series 62 convertible, um, and this one appears to be in really good nick. Check out the uh, opulent interior, as Cadillac can only provide. And uh, this one's, man, this is just, just a nice car, like especially for Palm Springs cruising just perfect for this area especially uh, when it's not too hot just to go out and roll down Palm Canyon Drive if you will really really uh, neat Cadillac and of course we have the uh, 1965 Amphicar and this one actually is a boat this one uh, converts into a boat and you can drive it around a lake and go fishing and take your friends out and uh, confuse the hell out of people that's really what these cars were for. From what I understand, they weren't a very good car and they weren't a very good boat, but they're more of like a novelty item. Little, uh, little four-cylinder engine in the back. More of a novelty item, but very collectible. And these are actually really expensive, especially you know being such such a famous car. And it's even got fins, which are more of like a '50s thing, not really a mid-'60s thing. Still, this one's got a really nice uh, restoration on it. And even comes with an oar, just in case. Now here's a little taste of England. This is a 1976 Austin London Taxi. And I believe these were all diesel, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. I've known a few people have had these. A lot of these wound up coming over here uh, once the uh, taxi services in, in London were done with them. For some reason they were sold off and they wound up over here. A lot of uh, British restaurants and fish and ship shops bought them, sort of like as advertisers. And of course, so a lot of your, uh, your like wedding people, you know, the guys who do the wedding cars, these, these kind of wound up in, the, in that sort of duty over here. Uh, even today, you see them in, in wedding duty. Uh, believe it or not, I've actually seen these at the uh, junkyard. Unfortunately, it was before I started doing the junkyard videos, but uh, there was one of these that was actually parked out front of a British restaurant in Pasadena for many years. And then when the restaurant closed, it sort of disappeared, and about six months later, wound up at uh, Pick Apart in Monrovia. I wish I'd have gotten a video of it, because it was sad to see. It was probably something I probably would have grabbed and just tried to put back on the road, but uh, that's me. This one has the advertisements in the back seat, you know, from when it was in duty in, uh, in London. 
I don't really know what the values are on these things. It's not going to be small because it's a diesel in it's a diesel in California. It's a 1976. It's actually pretty smog, so this would not actually have to be smog. And it's already registered in California, so all that that work's already been done. Still, it'd be a neat advertiser, especially if you own like a fish and chip shop. There's a neat one for all you fans of shoebox Fords. It's a 51 Ford. I'm guessing it's got the uh, flathead V8 in it. Uh, since it's got the V8 badging on the uh, fenders. And this one's just a nice, nice restoration. Still has the uh, three-speed manual transmission. Looks like it hasn't really been altered or messed with in any way. Just a neat car. I always liked these. I always thought they were really neat cars. Still has the uh, the chrome on the uh, on the side there that comes out of the tail light. I mean, just their attention to detail when they designed these cars was just fantastic. And who else remembers curb feelers? When do you ever see curb feelers on a car anymore? But uh, just a neat, neat car. Something that somebody can enjoy. There's the one for the Malays guys. This is 1973 Ford Thunderbird, and these were kind of built on the same uh, chassis as like the uh, Mark Five, or actually the Mark IVs that year, and of course the uh, the Cougar. Kind of like a personal luxury coupe. This one looks like it'd be a nice original car. Maybe it was repainted at one time. One of the hubcaps on the other side is uh, missing, which I'm sure you can actually find if you actually bother to look on eBay. It's got the uh, velour interior. Not sure if this one has a 460. I'm guessing these would have more like the uh, like the like the 400 in it would be a guess, or maybe like the 351. Not sure how many of these came with a 460. Fortunately, the hood's not up on this one to find it out. But uh, man, look at that tail panel. Problem is those get cracked a lot. I mean, you even hit it at a slow speed, that that tail panel's cracked, and you're not finding it. And this one's actually in really good condition. So again that wheel covers missing not something that's like unfindable you, you could find those and it's a vinyl top car it does not appear to have bubbling around it and that, that's an older vinyl top i believe no bubbling this car was probably garaged still what a neat car all right here's the uh, 1928 buick just kidding it's a, a 57 chevy bel air of course if you're a classic car guy you know what that is so i was just joking around with you this one appears to be a really nice original restoration though uh terror was done everything probably got a 283 would i would imagine probably with a power glide i see if that's a power glide yeah i think it's a power glide in there and this one is straight as an arrow looks like it was a restoration that was like recently completed but man what a neat color too. This is the, uh, the cool matching uh, plate frame, which was actually a, I believe it was a dealer option. I can't remember if it was a factory option or just a dealer option that, you know, the gold matched the uh, Chevrolet uh, emblem with the V on the Bel Airs. This one does not have the backup lights. I think I'll be able to go down there because there's a guy down there. Social distancing after all. Still, what a, uh, what a interesting, the amazingly restored 57 Chevy. Here's a 1954 English Ford Anglia. Now these were really popular as uh, drag racers. I'd, I'd say in the United States the majority of these have been altered and made into drag racers. There's really not a lot of stock ones of these left and this one's definitely not stock. It's got a uh, small block Chevy V8 in there. Um, it's even got a mirror so you can see how clean it is underneath. Right hand drive, so it might have actually been uh, one that was shipped over from England uh, that was originally sold there. And it appears to have come from uh, the South Dakota area. Still, I mean, kind of a neat little hot rod. Want something kind of unusual? Well, here it is. This is a uh, GT40 kit car, Volkswagen based, painted up to look like Lightning McQueen from the uh, Disney Pixar movies, you know, the Cars movies. And uh, yeah, I don't really get it either, but uh, here it is nonetheless. Kachow for sponsorship space. Call, okay, whatever. 
yeah I don't know <laughs> I mean I think it's a cool car but honestly if it was mine I would take all the uh, car stuff off because it doesn't even look like Lightning McQueen in my opinion but still it's I mean it's a nice car but uh, yeah the Lightning McQueen stuff definitely has to go I'm going to try to barrel through these pretty quick because they got the music right next to me. But there's a 57 Chevy Bel Air. Uh, looks like it's a little custom. This is a 86 Alfa Romeo. It actually looks to appear to have passed smog because it doesn't have the, the sticker on it. This is an old uh, 1960 Corvair. This one's the four-door. You don't see the four-door very often. And even rarer than that would be the station wagon. This one's a little bit on the custom side. These were cool because they had almost like the roof that almost looked like the 60, uh, the 5960 flat top full size GM cars. And this guy put uh, 59 Cadillac taillights in it. So, bit of a custom, sort of interesting. There's one for the Mopar guys. This is a 67 uh, Dodge Coronet two door. Um, guessing it's probably got a 318 in it would be would be my guess, unless it's been altered. Again, the hood's not up on this one. Uh, really nice white interior. Looks like it wasn't done that long ago, or they at least kept it really really clean because white interior does not keep clean. And it's a, a white vinyl top car, so that's also kind of neat. This one uh, has that cool panel that goes all the way across the back with the uh, tail lights. I'm sure those are like next to impossible to find these days. And those almost look like Chevy rally wheels. Yet they're on a Dodge. I'd probably put something more Mopar specific on this you know, for my taste. But still, it doesn't look like it's uh, terribly altered. It looks like it's all there. It looks like a really nice cruiser. You like weird French cars with hydraulic suspensions? Well, here's one. This is a 1971 Citroën DS, and it's weird, but these these are really cool. Just a, a really neat design. Definitely oddball. My dad actually said he wanted to buy one of these back when, and my mother would let him because she just didn't like the way it looked. But uh, definitely unusual. I always love the steering wheel on these with like the single uh, spoke coming off of it. And then I think then the, the shifter that's actually on the dash. I'll see if I can get around the other side and show it to you. This one's actually got a uh, French sticker on it. So this one's probably like a more recent uh, import. Not one that was sold in the, uh, in the United States originally. This one looks like it appears to have been from France originally. And uh, check out where the taillights are. With the uh, bullets coming out of it. Really interesting car. Very technologically advanced. And of course... So you can check out the uh, shifter there, and just uh, highly unusual, but uh, definitely a cool piece of automotive history coming to you from France. There's the uh, 1974 Ford F-250 Super Cab. This was like the first year that they made the uh, Super Cab uh, trucks. Not sure what engine it has in it. I actually had one of these a few years ago. It had like the uh, 460 in it. Uh, but uh, kind of neat had the uh, neat with the extra cab there that was the first year they did that some of these had the pop-out windows actually the one I had had the pop-out windows in it probably should have held on to it but you know the one I had actually had a camper on it that I had to get rid of even has the original wheels those I believe are 16.5 oh these are cracked these are 60, yeah, these are 16.5. I just saw on the side of the tire. The 16.5s can be a little bit difficult to find tires for. A lot of your Fords and Dodges, uh, trucks and vans use 16.5 back then. But uh, most people switch them out with a different size tire these days where you can actually find a tire more readily. They're more, more readily available. This one's got the uh, tow mirrors on it and everything else. This one actually is a camper special truck, so this one actually was made for putting a camper on the back. There's a 70 Chevelle SS454 convertible. Not sure if it's a tribute or if it's a real one. If it's a real one, it's a extremely high dollar car, obviously, especially if it's an LS6. Uh, it's got the polyglass uh, bias tires. Ooh, those are cracking really bad. Check out those cracks, man. 
Okay, that's a good point. Anytime you go to one of these auctions, you really want to look over these cars because this car's obviously been sitting a while. You can just see that crack. That's that's a blowout getting ready to happen. And on such a high dollar, amazing machine, that would have to be rectified very, very quickly uh, before you put any miles on it. I'm kind of surprised it's even here with ooh, all these tires are just completely cracked. I mean, just goes to show you could have an absolutely beautiful car and something dangerous just getting ready to happen. Hopefully somebody notices that before they try to do anything with this car. This one's got buckets, no console, but with a four speed. But man, those tires are dangerous. But other than that, it's just a really nice car. But I'm guessing, judging by those tires, this car had been sitting. As again, anytime you come to one of these auctions, buyer beware. Make sure you check these out. Anytime you get an old car, you got to look it over before you take it out and drive it. And that is a very good example of something that could seriously hurt somebody. Here's a 1960 Buick Invicta. Now, I've always liked these because uh, I always preferred the 59. I always liked the 59 the, the, with the angry girl with the slanted headlights and the larger fins but still the 1960 is an absolutely beautiful car this one's a four hard hardtop with the flat roof check out even the detail they'd used on the mirrors on these was absolutely amazing and uh has bias ply white wall tires and original style interior this is just a really nice car not perfect but something someone could enjoy uh, last registered 1988 so this one's actually been off the road uh, for a while as well as some of the other ones in fact this looks like an older paint job it's not original paint but it is old an older paint job and this one also has curb feelers i said i always like these hopefully it's been hopefully everything was looked at all the safety stuff before they put it back on the road and brought it in here to sell because it's been off the road for quite a for over three decades all right, here's just a neat original old chevy it's a 53 chevy bel air four-door you know nothing spectacular but something to someone could really enjoy it's got nicks in the paint nowhere near perfect but it's just a car that would be just something fun to take out Roll around town in and take the family out in. And it's going across the block. I believe this is uh, one of the one of the Friday cars. I have to look it up. It's got the uh, purple dots on the taillights. So this is like your perfect entry level classic car. It's kind of what my channel's about. So something like this. It's, I'm guessing it's got the original six-cylinder motor in it too because these these did not come with V8 Chevy didn't come with V8s until 1955 There's another uh, 1970 Chevy Chevelle. This one's more custom and it looks more safe than the other one uh, This one's got a, a 502 crate motor in it I'm guessing this one was probably like the Malibu that they, they made into a super sport. Obviously. I don't know 100% it says Chevelle SS on the plaque so Maybe it is a real super sport car. Obviously, you'd have to check the numbers and all that good stuff. Um, it has buckets and console. It's got the in-dash tachometer. And of course, the uh, aftermarket on these is very strong. And of course, the uh, parts availability on these are very strong. Still, it's a really nice car. I love my early cars. This one's a 1926 Buick Model 20 sedan. Really neat early car. It really takes a special person to own a vehicle like this because obviously there's a lot of upkeep on them. And there's a lot of quirks to these. There's an eight ball shifter in it. Appears to be all original. Just sort of a neat car. This is the kind of thing you could take to that holiday uh, motor tour they have in Arcadia every year. Uh, which I did a video of last year as I trip. And uh, this one's in really good neck and something that looks like it might even be ready to enjoy.
Are you like big Malaise era Cadillacs? Well, here's one for you. This is a 1976 Eldorado Coupe. It's like a really, really nice car. The Lure interior. This one looks like it came out of Nevada. It's even got like the original, like old style Nevada plates. This one was last registered in 1997. Again, you gotta watch it with these cars that haven't been registered in a few years. I think anytime you buy one of these, you wanna make sure that the owner's actually had it gone through and safety checked and everything like that because that can get kind of scary, especially anything that comes with wheel cylinders. But uh, this one's a really nice car. It looks like it was garage. Probably came out of someone's collection. Which is probably why it hasn't been registered in so many years. But uh, still, kind of a neat car. There's a couple of neat classics. This is a 1970 Volkswagen Beetle, cow, cow style. It's even got the old uh, floor mats. They used to sell accessory floor mats for like all different kinds of vehicles uh, with the neat little rubber designs on them. Uh, it's got a cover, so it's covering up the gas tank and things like that. Custom interior. It looks like it was done probably in the, like the 80s or 90s. It's got the, the the sound system, which is definitely indicative of a of like an 80s or 90s uh, custom Beetle. It's got the deck lid that comes out, even though it's a little crooked. It's got the older tint that needs to be redone. Yeah, it needs a little bit. It's got fully chromed engine, but still, I mean, neat piece of Volkswagen history because this is how they did them back in the 80s and 90s, the, the cow style bugs. And this wagon was actually at this auction last time I was here. Uh, if you look at my other video, so I'm not going to get too in depth with it, but just amazing custom paint all over it, including pinstriping all over the dash. And uh, I guess either it didn't sell last time or maybe a new owner got it and then got tired of it and decided to bring it back here and sell it again. But who knows? Still, I mean, look at the metal. I don't know if the metal flake's going to pick up on the on the roof there, but pretty amazing there's a couple classic uh, 1960s Plymouths this one's a, a 63 Plymouth Sport Fury convertible this one's got the uh, Golden Commando so that's like a 383 check that one out it's got uh, four speed with a console not sure if that's original, but if it is, that's got to be extremely rare, especially on a convertible. So most of your hypo cars generally were like the low, low option cars, not a convertible. As I walk past the music again, there's a 1965 Plymouth Satellite. This one's a bit of a hot rod. This one's got buckets console with automatic and torque thrust wheels with the BFGs on it. Both of these are really nice Mopars that I'm sure any enthusiast would love to uh, love to own and enjoy. There's the, another 1960 Buick four-door flat top. This one's an Invicta. Kind of nice. I think this was called the Dusty Rose color. It was like a big GM color back then. It has the original uh, nail head in it. Original upholstery. It's even got a little uh, center centerpiece there for a cup holder that's removable. It's a really sharp car. All right, here's a, a 1964 Cadillac Fleetwood. Look, it's got the high roof, uh, so it makes it easier to get in the back. My dad actually had one of these, but he had one, uh, his had the bucket seats in it, if I remember correctly. Here's an Avani. I think this said it was, was an 82 model, so. Basically after Studebaker went under, like another company bought uh, all the Avani stuff and they kept producing them, I think up until like even into the 2000s. Of 
course with the different designs so they could get away with the uh, for the safety standards and as the years went on they kind of got got funkier and funkier this one still kind of looks like the, the 60s Avani I think we need more Cadillacs in this video. So there's a 1957 Coupe de Ville. Looks to be a, a California black plate car. It's in really nice original condition. Perfect car for Palm Springs, if you ask me, because, man, it's got the old leather interior. It's, uh, it's cracking, but they usually do. And of course, it's got those iconic Cadillac tail fins on it. There's a 63 Ford Galaxy with a 427 FE in it with uh, two four barrel carburetors. Not sure if this is an original 427 car or not. Looks like it's got a lot of custom touches, so I'm guessing it might not be. It's uh, actually even got a four speed in it with the console with the bucket seats. It's an original 427 four speed car. It's, it's a rear piece and uh, probably deserves to be put back to original. It was a 390 car? Yeah, he said it was a 390 car. Alright, here's the uh, 1967 Ford F250 pickup. This one's got a uh, 428 in it. With, uh, Cobra uh, accessories on the uh, engine. It says on the windshield it was the same original owner since uh, until last year. So it looks like it came out of Nevada. All right, this is what I've been trying to shoot all more, and this one always has a crowd of people around it. This is a 63 Pontiac Catalina Safari Station Wagon. It's a really nice, uh, I don't think it's original, I think it's just a really nice restoration. It's got underdash air and everything, so it's ready to go cruising. It might be from the Palm Springs area, because uh, a lot of guys out here obviously have to have their air conditioning, because it gets very warm in the uh, summertime. In fact, it's, uh, it's November and it's actually kind of warm today. This one's got the uh, third row seating in it, the way back. It's got his uh, surf stickers on it. And I'm not going to get too close to that guy, but you kind of get the idea. Yeah, I'd really like to know the story on this one. This is a, a 1960 Ford Falcon Gasser. And it looks like majority of the body has been stripped down to the metal and then clear coated over. And uh, I don't know what else to say about it. I don't know what he's running there. I'm guessing probably a small block Ford. It's got an uh, automatic on the floor there. It's got the uh, console. That's actually a Falcon console because I had that same console in a 62 Falcon I owned. And look at the uh, wheel well treatment there to accommodate the uh, wider tires. And it's got a backup light that's uh, sort of modern LED. Kind of wild, and you definitely won't see yourself coming and going in that. All right, so I took a quick break, went and got some lunch, and now I'm back filming more cars. So now actually the auction has since started, so you'll probably hear it in the background instead of uh, copyrighted music now, and I'll try to film some of the auction action here in a minute. For right now, we're gonna look at this uh, 85 uh, Eldorado Cadillac. These actually have the 4100 motor in them, which probably keeps the values down on them, but uh, they're still great driving cars. If you look at my videos, I had that 84 Sedan DeVille a couple years ago that I drove for a while, and then I actually sold to a guy in my neighborhood. So it was last tagged in uh, 2019, so who knows why it was parked for a year. It appears to be in really good condition. It's got the uh, custom uh, 
wheels used to see a lot of those on the uh, like the Cadillac dealers used to put those on so they could make their extra spiff and white leather interior and it looks to be original as well a little bit worn but it's all there and of course the uh, faux Rolls-Royce grill very much indicative of uh, dealer add-ons for Cadillac in the uh, 1980s there's a nice Thunderbird I gotta see what year this is probably like 77 yeah 77 model uh, Thunderbird I don't know if this is a special edition or anything. I don't think so. I had a 79 Heritage Edition, which was kind of neat with a, with a moonroof a few years back. kind of wish I still had it. And it's got the uh, neat vinyl top where it kind of stops and then keeps going again. It doesn't appear to have any rod or anything funky popping up underneath it. In fact, it may have actually been replaced because usually they don't look that good after that many years. Unless it was a garaged car. This one looks like it came out of Oregon. These are great Malays cruisers because they just go down the highway like nothing else. Just extremely comfortable cars. It's even got the original radio in it. Wow, it says it's got 69,506 actual miles. It's got the 400 cubic inch in it. One owner car. And it looks like it. There's a great little uh, summertime cruiser. This is a 1966 Chevy Corvair convertible. And of course, I mean, there's great parts availability on these. Huge club support. And uh, there's still a lot of these around. Uh, of course, it's your air-cooled uh, rear-engined Chevrolet. They were kind of going after the uh, Volkswagen market. This one's in good nick. And it's got a, a nice period uh, correct luggage rack on the back for hauling your extra stuff. And it's got some uh, old, looks like Keystone mags on it with a with a spinner. So, like I said, the auction's going full force here. Here's the uh, like a 1955 uh, Pontiac four door that's about to go on the block. As you can see, the cars lined up. Now, first, we're going to show this is a 1965. Chevy Impala Super Sport two door bucket seats console automatic. It's kind of a neat car. This one's uh, this one's black plate and it's 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 uh, doesn't have like a YM sticker on it, so it's probably an original black plate car. I've actually got an extra set of those Super Sport caps from a '66 I used to own. If anyone's looking for them, I might actually part with them. This one's a uh, 327, so it's a small block car. Now we'll right into the uh, 1955 Pontiac. It's got the uh, aftermarket uh, spinner hub caps on it. <laughs> no, nope. make it hard on you. The interior was redone at some point. It's got a little bit of water damage in the back, but this is a great driver car. Like one of those cars that's just great if you're just getting into uh, classic cars. And if you've been watching my channel for more than five minutes, you know I'm a big AMC fan. And this one's a 68 AMX with a 390 and an automatic. Definitely the AMC muscle car, two seat muscle. So it's kind of like a shortened version of the Javelin. Buckets console automatic. This one's pretty clean. These are nice because they, they don't have as quite a quite a high a value as say, your you know GM, Mopar, and uh, Ford muscle cars. But they're still popular nonetheless. I actually know the guy that owns this uh, guy named Bob. Uh, he's actually in the car right now. This is a 1955 a Lincoln Capri, and uh, he remembers my father. He remembers my daughter, my, my father's uh, 56 Lincoln, which actually I still own, which I really need to get out. I keep saying that in all my videos, but it's it's definitely got to happen. And this one is a coral pink Capri absolutely gorgeous absolutely mid-century 
totally amazing. It's got the uh, Knight, which the, uh, the, the, the 56 Premier has that too. And uh, if you look at this, the uh, this, you flip this up, and that's actually where the key goes for the trunk. I'm not going to touch this car, but uh, that is where the key goes. If I ever do a video on mine, I'll be sure to flip that up to show you where the key goes. But uh, you kind of get the idea. It's got fender skirts, plenty of stainless and chrome. Definitely a uh, 1950s cruiser ready to go across the block. There's another gorgeous 50s cruiser. It's a 1957 Buick convertible. And check out that two tone blue. This is just a nice restoration on this car. Very mid century. These are neat. They have a little uh, boat cleats on it, like as if it was a boat, because it pretty much is a boat as big as it is. Just a big, heavy car. Kelsey Hayes wheels. They definitely don't build these little Buicks like this anymore. There's another Impala. This one's a 1962. A little bit of a modified car. Torque thrust twos on it. Not a super sport. Bench seat automatic on the column with a power glide. We got a uh, 1957 Ford Thunderbird. Nicely restored car. This one's automatic. These had the, uh, I believe the 312 or the 292 you could get in these. There's a uh, 1936 Ford Phaeton. I'm pretty sure that blue is not an original color. <laughs> that seems a little bright for a uh, 1930s Ford. It's got the original flathead engine. Looks to be very original other than the, the color. Including the top looks, looks kind of old. I'm sure it was redone at some point, but... Uh, Very interesting car and a very uncommon car to see. there's a nice uh, 68 Camaro, obviously uh, not original, it's an RSSS car though, with a 4 speed on a console. There's a Corvette, this is a 67. 67 small block car with a four speed. I'm oh, sorry, it's a, it's a 66. There's a uh, 78 Datsun 280Z for all the uh, fans of the vintage Japanese cars. And this one's pretty gorgeous. These usually when you find them, they're pretty well sun-baked and left outside for many years. So to see one in such good condition is, is, is really nice. It's got uh, some pretty correct aftermarket wheels. There's a 61 Cadillac that's uh, been customized, almost like a lowrider style. Look at the uh, custom multi-tone blue paint. It's got little sparklies in it and lots of metal flake. 
That's got the uh, Lincoln push buttons on it for the doors. So it's a full custom. I'm just going to do like a slow walk through here because uh, there's so many people kind of watching the auction action at a distance. And obviously we're trying to keep our distance uh, due to the regulations. But uh, you should get an idea of some of the variety of the cars that are here as I walk on through. 40 Ford Custom. There's a Mercury. GT350 uh, convertible. Continuation car. <laughs> Which means it's not an original Shelby. 1962 Corvette. For the Porsche guys, 356A. Fifty nine model. Another sixty seven uh, Camaro. Fifty nine Pontiac Bonneville convertible. My dad actually used to have one of these. Dad had a white one. This one does not have tri power or anything. My dad's actually had the tri power on it. And it's got the sparklies in this in the carpet. I don't know if it's going to pick it up on the camera. And I always love the tail fins on these with the stars. How about some more AMC porn for you? This one's a 1971 Javelin. what it says on the thing. This one's got a 304 in it. So check out how the vinyl tops were done on these. Almost to look like a T-top. Very unusual design. Here's one that's sure to be high dollar. This is a uh, Shelby Cobra 427. That's one of the uh, continuation cars done by Shelby in 2009. So it's not an original one from the 1960s, but uh, it was actually was built by uh, Shelby in uh, 2009. And I know these were very expensive. And the uh, dash is even signed by Carol Shelby. Yeah. There's a 1969 uh, GTO Judge uh, that's a Resto mod. This one's got an LS3 in it, so it's been upgraded to a modern drivetrain. So from the outside, it looks just like 1969, but uh, you've got all the new components that uh, make it reliable. Not sure if it's an original Judge car or not, but uh, seems like if it was, they would they would go back to original though. But man, this thing's a really nice restoration, nonetheless. I'm not sure I would leave the uh, paneling that said Chevrolet on it though. <laughs> All right, for the Malays guys, here's a '92 Buick Riviera. So these came with the uh, 3800 motor, so they're actually very reliable. I mean, not a high dollar, it's not really a collector piece, uh, but still interesting to see one at a collector car auction. Those wheels are definitely not original Buick pieces. 
but this car is very clean and just the kind of thing you would want for uh, driving around in Palm Springs. Here's a 2010 Volkswagen Beetle pickup truck with an upside down Acura badge. So this one's kind of unusual. Uh, this actually says it was a total loss and it was a salvage. So they actually put a sticker on there warning you that. So they probably took a car that was hit hard in the back and uh, customized it into what you see here. So, which does affect the value and also does affect it if you're gonna uh, insure it. Um, but kind of an unusual custom here. I said, I don't know why they put the Acura badges on upside down like that because that's definitely a very identifiable badge uh, to use, which and I look at that and I go, well, that's an Acura badge. Still kind of an interesting build. Okay, for all you Italian car fans, here's a uh, 1967 Lancia Flavia Coupe. I know really not a lot about these other than they're Italian. It's made by Lancia. It actually still has the original Italian uh, plate on it. And for the Radwood crowd, here's an 83 Toyota Celica that's absolutely clean. It still has the uh, sunset plates on it, which are good. Usually if those aren't faded, that means it was garage because those sunset fade plates used to fade super quick if the, if, the, if the car was left outside for any period of time. And the interior is uh, super nice. This is something you could take to a vintage Japanese car show or Radwood or Malay's Days. Last tagged in 2014, so who knows why it's been off the road. But uh, if it's here, I don't think it had a sticker saying it didn't pass smog. So that's uh, probably been gone through. It says it's being sold uh, no reserve, uh, this, this 83 Celica. So definitely something that's not a high dollar piece, but uh, something that's gaining in popularity and gaining in value. There's a real nice original 65 Galaxy 500 with a uh, 390 FE in it. So it looks uh, like maybe it was repainted at one time. Other than that, it's pretty original. And it's a LTD hardtop. So it's sort of a top of the line Galaxy. And this one's pretty much about as original as it gets, other than the paint. Actually, the upholstery looks like it might have been redone at one time as well. A couple early 70s Malays classics, uh, American made. This one's a uh, 73 Nova four door. And it's a little bit worn. It looks like just like the kind of thing you'd find out of, their, out of Craigslist. So, not a high dollar car, so I wouldn't expect it to go too high, especially with the uh, two extra doors on it. But uh, another example of something like if you have like a 16 17 year old kid who really wants a vintage car this is exactly the kind of thing you should be looking for because they're easy to maintain easy to get parts for and uh i mean it's a chevy so you always be able to find someone to work on it if you can't figure it out yourself this one's a 74 dodge dart swinger so this is the swinger uh, back in the day, I used to be in like some, you know, I used to do a lot of scooter rides. A lot of the scooter guys used to get those swinger badges from the junkyard and stick them on their scooter. I'm kind of amazed that they Dodge even got away with using that, that name on their car. But uh, this one looks pretty, pretty original. Upholstery looks to be original. And it's a two door. It does have a vinyl top, which is uh, coming up in the back which is normal, but it doesn't look like it's rusted out or anything, as a lot of 70s cars are. Uh, license plate looks like it was probably recently brought into the state or put back on the road after many years, either one. And it's even got under dash air conditioning in it. And now for something completely different. This is a 1970 Volkswagen Beetle that's painted like uh, the 80s, I guess. It's like sort of like a beach buggy. They've sealed off the doors. It's got like a funky texture to it. I'm not gonna touch it though, because who knows what's going on there, especially with COVID. But uh, kind of like a tiki surf interior. Battery box is sitting there. 
and uh, it's it's unusual what will bring at auction who knows because you've definitely got to find the right buyer for this one that's really all i'm going to say about that it's got to be someone that just got to have this All right, here's a uh, 1962 Dodge Dart, one of the uh, unusual ones. This is sort of like the tail end of the uh, Virgil Exner years. And this one's actually already gone over. It said the high bid was 18000 and didn't sell. Being a four-door, I don't think that's real money on this car because they just really, honestly, a four-door, it's, it's just not worth that kind of money, in my opinion. Um, still a nice car, but uh, we'll see. I mean, hopefully they can find a buyer for this one. But me thinks they're going to have to come down a little bit on the price there. Still, it's it's a really nice example of mid-century motoring. All right, this one's very much in the 70s style. This is a 72 AMC Javelin with a 304 V8 in it. But check out those side pipes. That's something you definitely don't see on cars anymore. And this one, of course, has... Uh, Buckets console looks like original upholstery. It's a little bit worn and it's got a, a four-speed in it And oh my god, that is an eight track with the best of Charlie pride in there This is a really really neat car. It's an SST model as well Come around I'll show you the other side Now here's a 1967 Ford Mustang with a 200 inch six. This one went through. It says high bid was 11,250. Um, that's kind of strong money, even though they didn't sell for that. That's pretty strong money for a six cylinder, in my opinion, because uh, most people want the eight cylinders in these, the 289. Even though the 200 inch six is a very reliable engine, and it's very easy to uh, keep on the road. Um, I owned a few Falcons. Of course, my Fairmont's got a 200 inch six, and the uh, the other Maverick I had, the one that I already sold, had a 200 inch six. This one's in good condition. It's not perfect. It's just a really nice driver. But uh, let me know what you think. I think the Mar Mustang market is strong enough for 11,000 on a six cylinder 67. That's just like a nice driver. There's another 65 Impala. This one's a Super Sport 327 convertible. And uh, with white interior, buckets, console, four-speed, but with a small block. So kind of a neat car because you don't see a lot of the small block cars coming with a four-speed transmission with a console. So the antenna on the back, which is kind of cool. Right, here's one for the high dollar crowd. You probably watched my uh, Volkswagen bus meet video. You know these are bringing some some really really good sums of money. It's a '59 Volkswagen Microbus. This one's pretty sharp. Interesting to see what this one goes for, especially at this auction, because these usually roll through like you know the big name auctions, like your Barrett Jacksons and your Meekums and stuff like that. So it's kind of unusual to see something like that popping up out here seeing as they're bringing like six figure sums these days still nice to see out here all right so, so smiling can you so, tell i'm smiling so i ran into chuck sherman the guy i did lemons rally with he runs uh, malaise motors on facebook and this crappy car two wonderful facebook groups that you need to join uh, and he's right here at the Palm Springs auction uh, with me. It's beautiful. Reason. It's amazing. I let him hang out with me sometimes. Yeah, I took a shower. Okay, that's good. As long as you, long as you wash something. you got to wash something. Anyhow, that's probably the end of the video because I'm kind of tired. I've been out here since 9 a.m. And it's it's like 2 and it's hot. And he drive back to L.A. And, and Chuck Chuck has his bedtime pretty soon. So yeah. Uh, until next time, well, I'll be seeing you. Arrivederci. There you go. <laughs>